To create the amethyst nail, you are going to need the amethyst glitter that is mixed with a clear acrylic powder. You're going to need gray acrylic powder. This is acrylic powder that actually has been pigmented to a gray color. I have two here. One's a light gray, one is a darker gray with shimmer. And the other thing you're going to need is clear acrylic powder to encapsulate the design. Now, if you don't have any of these, all you really need is some white acrylic powder, some black oxide pigment, which this is an FDA approved cosmetic grade pigment. You need the loose amethyst glitter and some clear acrylic powder. And so I'm going to show you how to make your own gray acrylic powder and your own mix of the amethyst glitter so that you can get going. When working with cosmetic grade pigments, you'll find that they are rather grainy and chunky. And this is a huge problem because if you would just mix this into your clear acrylic powder, you're just going to have chunks of pigment in there. And every time you dip your brush to pick it up, you're just, as soon as you put it down on the nail, you're going to have ugly chunks. So you have to crush this pigment up into the acrylic powder. This can be done using a mortar and a pestle. And so this is created to grind pigment. I actually picked up this one off um, Amazon for like six bucks with free shipping. So it was very inexpensive. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our clear acrylic powder or actually we're making gray. So to make gray, black plus white equals gray. So we're actually going to use white acrylic powder and mix some black into it. And that will give us a gray. So I'm going to get a little bit of white acrylic powder in there. I'm going to pop open my bag of black oxide pigment. And they make cute little spoons that you can use to do this. Um, I don't have one. I'll get one eventually. And I'm only putting just a little bit. You can see what a little tiny bit there is in there. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pestle and I'm going to just crunch this up swirl it around in there and really make sure to get all the chunks out. The great thing about this is once you do this, this mix is good forever. So you'll have it to keep And this looks pretty good to me. It's a little dark. So I'm going to go ahead and just add some more of my white acrylic powder. Another really cool thing is if you want to add a little bit of sparkle to it. I actually have this um, eyeshadow. And this eyeshadow, obviously it's cosmetic grade because it's an eyeshadow. <laughs> but um, it's actually a pigment powder. And um, it's from Hot Pants Cosmetics. I'm not sure if they're even still in business or not, but um, what I'm going to do is just pop this open and you can see the really awesome shimmer that it has. So if I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer to my mix, I'll just tap out a little bit of this. And now I'll have a shimmery acrylic powder similar to that one. I'm going to go ahead and just mix this up. I think it needs a little more shimmer, don't you? Just a little more. It's trial and error, so there's really no formula, but if you get too much pigment and not enough acrylic, when you go to pick up your acrylic, it's going to look really chunky and weird. So you want to have a nice smooth bead of acrylic when you go to pick up your acrylic. That looks pretty awesome, right? Yay. So here's a dark shimmery gray acrylic powder that we're going to use for the amethyst now. And now to make the glitter mix, it's so simple to do this. All you do is take a loose glitter, 
like this one, which is amethyst. This is actually a blend of 11 glitters to get this beautiful color. You're just gonna take this and you're gonna put it right into your clear acrylic powder. And again, you don't wanna screw up the ratio. I mean, if you do, it's so easy to fix it. You just add more clear acrylic powder. Or if it's too much clear acrylic and not enough sparkle, you add more sparkle. So I've heard like one third glitter, two thirds powder, half and half. Just as long as when you pick it up, you have a nice round bead, you should be good. So then all we're gonna do is we're gonna put the lid on this and we're give it, gonna give it a good shake. Let me get a lid here. And we have a nice blend, looks pretty similar to the other one, a nice blend of um, glitter. So this is our amethyst mixed with clear acrylic powder. So we're ready to rock and roll. Now I did put a trend kit together for those of you who are just starting out to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, in the kit you will get uh, five grams of amethyst, which is enough to overflow a pot if you're mixing it with acrylic. You can also mix it into hard gel, um, or you can just use it with gel polish. I've done the same technique with gel polish. You're also going to get some cosmetic grade FDA approved black oxide pigment to use to color your acrylic powder or your hard gel or whatever you're doing. And you're also gonna get the art paints. Um, the art paints are amazing. It's a, um, They're made with cosmetic grade pigments. The black, um, it's so black. This is rock white, and this white is specifically formulated for doing techniques like this. It's not a good paint for drawing lines and nail art like that, but when you're doing any type of rock or marbling technique, this stuff is amazing. I'm gonna be working on a nail trainer hand today because it's just too early to wake my daughter up to use as a hand model. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and take the form. I am gonna place this underneath it for stability. You don't have to use a nail form. You can totally do this with a tip. I just prefer to sculpt. So I'm gonna roll my form. I'm going to place it up under the free edge. I'm going to close the bottom of the form. And I'm going to do um, like a box shaped nail, coffin shape, ballet slipper, whatever you want to call it. So I am going to um, sort of pinch this into a nice tapered look. Let me just turn this to the side so you can see. It's not exactly the same as it is on a person, but you get the idea. The nail has already been prepared and dehydrated. I'm going to go ahead and use my bonder. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to sculpt out the free edge here using a clear acrylic powder. And the reason for using a clear acrylic powder is because next time my customer comes in, I don't want to have to completely like shave the nail down and pop it off. So I'm going to use my beat up clear acrylic here. I'm just going to cause this to be flush with the natural nail. I'm going to work the product down the nail a little bit, tucking in my sides. Then establishing a nice free edge. Very, very, very thin, just setting up a foundation. And I would go ahead, if I'm doing a full set, I would go ahead and do all 10 nails like this. And then I would pop the forms off. Okay, and so, seems pretty hard to me. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the form to get this out of my way anyway. So when you remove a form, you always wanna remove it in a downward motion. You never wanna go and pull up on it because that's just mean and you will hurt your client. So I've removed the form and now we're ready to go. I'm going to start with a light gray color that we mixed up. Um, this was just mixed using white acrylic powder and black oxide cosmetic grade pigments. Um, it does come in the trend kit. If you don't have any gray acrylic, if you have gray, awesome. So I'm gonna start by picking up a bead I'm going to just put this down and I'm going to start kind of moving it around. I do realize that more than likely I will file into this and if I do, who cares? It's not a big deal. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to like shove it over because I want to make an opening for this amethyst. And it's okay to have high spots, low spots because that'll give us the opportunity to fit some of that beautiful dark gray that we mixed up. And it's a rock, so it doesn't have to be like perfect because it's a rock and it's nature. So don't get hung up on making like a beautiful, perfect opening. But you do want to keep it tapered around the cuticle area. I am, when I pick up this uh, color, it tends to be a little bit runny. So when you see my brush disappear, it's because I'm actually blotting it out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, we mix up this beautiful dark shimmery gray acrylic. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm just going to use it really wet. I'm going to fill in. My brush is so wet. So I can just pick it up and use it almost like a paint. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just kind of spread that. And now comes the fun part where we get to add the amethyst glitter. So we mixed up our amethyst glitter earlier and we're gonna go ahead and just apply this down the center. Just gonna drop that in there. 
And I'm just going to kind of scoot it in there. I need a little more. Oops, sorry. I will grab a little more. You want some depth to it so it doesn't have to lay like all smooth and perfect. You can jab your brush into it. I know that like everybody says, don't use the tip of your brush, but who cares? I'm making a rock for crying out loud. I do what I want. But you do want to make sure that your brush is clean if you do decide to stab it with the tip. Okay. And the last thing we're going to do is just encapsulate this with clear acrylic. And I'm going to encapsulate the whole thing because when we did that fancy stuff with the two colors of gray, if that doesn't get encapsulated, it's just going to get filed off. And some of it might, and that's totally fine because it's a rock. It's not supposed to look perfect. So I have the finger like tilted down, which is going to help this, uh, clear acrylic to move away from the cuticle and towards the free edge, which is what I want. I am going to like turn this and check out my sides make sure I didn't miss anywhere because once you put your acrylic away and you're ready to file, the last thing you want to have to do is get the acrylic back out. The other thing I'm going to do is check this out from the side. That is like really ugly. So I am going to add some more um, clear acrylic powder right in there to make sure that my nail has a good apex, which is the high point. You want it to have a good arch. Even though it's a rock, it still needs to be pretty. So now I'm going to turn it to the side, and that's a lot better. I mean, a lot of this up here is going to come off, but the center is going to be great. So we're ready for finish filing. Okay, we're ready to finish file. The nail is nice and hard. Um, I used to, when I first started, do all my perimeters and then use my electric file and then go back with my hand file. So when I use, um, when I do finish filing and I use an electric file, I do the e-file first and I get it into ballpark range of where I want it. And then I come through with a hand file, so I'm not doing double work. Also, please protect your eyes. These are nail specs. These are, um, uh, safety glasses that I've created for nail techs. Wear glasses, wear safety goggles. I don't care what you wear. Wear the nail specs, wear whatever you want. Protect your eyes because it's just stupid not to. So I am going to protect my eyes. And I have on here a um, medium a small barrel Z cut carbide and actually the corners off so you can hit your skin with it and not slice yourself open. So I'm just going to come through here. Start around the cuticle area. What's cool is you know, there's bands if you really look at amethyst. And um, by actually filing into this, I am creating bands. So I'm going to check this out from the side. See what I'm looking like. Not too shabby. Just going to work on it a little more. I'm going to have that high spot right in the middle of my nail when I turn it to the side. And turn it again. Mm, pretty good. Um, 
I'm going to move out this free edge. And that's all with my e-file. Now I'm going to take my hand file. I'm going to work on my perimeter. Don't be afraid to turn your client's hand either when you're working. They want to have nice, nicely shaped nails just as much as you do. So if they want what's best for them, they'll cooperate. <laughs> Good. Just gonna get around this cuticle area, make sure we're nice and smooth. And I'm pretty happy with that shape. Sorry, I keep moving. It's hard to file on a video. It's a little different. Um, I can't really break this finger off, but I just want to give you an idea of how thin. This oops broke it. Sorry, you broke your finger. See how thin it is. Uh oh. Now what? Oopsies. Um. Okay. Well, we don't need that hand anyway. All right. So now I'm going to take my sponge buffer. Just gonna give this a quick little buff to make sure it's nice and smooth. And now I'm going to clean this off with um, some cotton, uh, with some alcohol, scrub fresh, whatever your cleaning stuff is. And we're going to do the art paints next. Okay, so now we're ready for some fun. This nail has been um, wiped off and it's now free of dust and debris and it's looking pretty awesome. So I have just like a piece of paper plate here. I have a wipe. Um, from soft landings. I have um, some water in a dappen dish. I have a nail art brush, um, just a pretty fine one, and uh, my most important tools. I have rock white. Rock white is actually a cosmetic grade um, white art paint specifically designed for doing rocks and um, granite marble type things. It's not good for painting white lines, so don't get it if you want to paint white lines. This is only for like earthy looking stuff. Um, and then I'm using the regular black art paint that I carry. It's a very thin viscosity, very highly pigmented, made with cosmetic grade pigments, acrylic based, non-toxic, whatever. So anyway, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my black. And um, this stuff is so awesome and runny. You only need like like literally I just put two little teeny drops of it and okay gotta work a little bit quick try to get my water over in this picture so you can see what's going on here so it's important to have the water the paint the towel all three are going to be used just making sure my brush is clean okay so here we go I'm going to start by getting some of my black art paint and I'm going to follow right along in a messy sort of way this edge okay I wipe my brush get it wet and I'm gonna right away come in right along this line with a lot of water I 
I'm going to let the water come out of my brush and then I'm going to just soak up the excess. This is going to create some really cool, um, really thin lines. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Quickly come in there, quickly grab my water. and wet this. I'm gonna dry my brush off and then I'm gonna come in, suck that excess water out of there. Leave some really cool rings, right? Awesome. Um, again, if I wanted to do another round of rings, um, I could just come in with the art paint, get my brush cleared out, add water real fast, dry my brush out, come back in and soak that water up and it leaves some really fine little rings. It's pretty cool, pretty cool technique. But anyway, that's gonna cause this to really pop um, where it, it gives it a very 3D effect. I mean, you're gonna have 3D effect because it's acrylic, but in addition to that, you're really gonna see that pop because of that black right along that edge. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with my rock white, give it a good shake. Get a little glob. I'm sorry that I'm so shaky. I have my phone kind of suspended. I have something fancy coming in the mail though for the next video to hold my phone. All right, so we are going to get the brush cleared out. I'm going to pick up my white. Now, what's cool about this is um, it's gonna look like really crazy white, but let's grab my water. Um, but what's going to happen is when that top coat goes over it, it's totally not going to look that bright. It's going to like turn the volume down by 25%. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to dry my brush and just going to suck that excess water out of there. That's going to leave some pretty awesome bands. And I'm going to do the same thing, turn this to the other side, pick some of this white up, being very generous with it because it's a rock. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let it set up for just a second and I'm going to get a really wet brush. Add water. If I wanted to leave, leave it like that, I totally could. Heck, I just might. I'm going to suck just a little bit out of here. It's not going to be that bright. How simple is that, right? If you don't like it, you can wet your brush and just be like, wah, 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 and it'll come right off too. But how cool is that, huh? I like it. I like it a lot. I'm going to just go over this one, give this a little bit more boldness. Because again, when the top coat goes over, it's going to turn the volume down by about 25% on the white. Only on the white. Black's going to stay just as black. There we go. So just make sure it's dry because you were just using water. So water plus nail stuff is usually bad. So we're going to make sure we're dry. Give it just a second and get this out of my way. Ah. And I'm going to top coat. I'm going to use this cool new product from Shellac. It's called Express 5. It is really shiny. I was surprised at how shiny it was. So I'm going to use this. Seems dry to me. And we're going to go. I want you to kind of watch what happens to this white when this top coat goes over. Totally going to tone it down. really blends it in and makes it look like marble. How cool is that? I'm gonna stick it into the LED. So here is the finished amethyst nail. This can be done in whatever color you want. 
but I hope that you learned something today. Please share the video. It's a free video. Um, tell all your friends. And thank you for watching.